getting real. Ooh, I have a phone call. Sometimes in life, you just gotta roll the dice and see what happens. Sometimes good things happen, sometimes not so good things happen. But every day is a bit of a chance. And my wife and I went in together and rolled the dice on a little piece of property up here. And it's been something I've been wanting to do for a very long time. And uh, it seems like the time is right, the place is right, the property is right. And so, um, turn in here. Okay. Let me get that gate right quick. Oh, there it is. Welcome to Wild World. Here we are in the middle of the woods. There are vines everywhere. Huge trees. This is the middle or close to uh, six and a half acres that haven't been touched in about 30 years. So it's just been sitting here cooking. And there's more wisteria here than I've ever seen in my life. Giant, I'll show them to you, big vines like this with more vines around, just vines everywhere. It could be like a jungle. Um, and my wife and I just, just closed on this, just bought it. Ah, get off me. And, uh, you know, she helped me do it. So it's a dream of mine to have an off-grid cabin. And, and maybe, maybe this is what matters the most sometimes. You gotta, you gotta take a chance on something. You know, we're not wealthy people, you know, but uh, making an investment like this uh, could be good, could be bad. You never know. It depends on uh, how much sweat equity we think you can put into something, right? Well, I'm not young anymore either, so we'll see how that works out. Let's go take a look. That's wisteria. That's poison oak. There's wisteria, wisteria, wisteria. The entire canopy is wisteria. More wisteria. Every green thing you see sticking up is wisteria. Now it's highly invasive. It's not native to our country. Um, it's even slightly poisonous to some people so you don't want to play with it too much you certainly don't want to ingest any of the flowers uh, look at this just massive vines everywhere so I'm sure in the spring when that little short window of purple happens this would be gorgeous it's also killing the forest it's just tearing it down one of the key features here on this property that I really liked was this big pecan tree it's really old. I'm gonna say, you know, this is this is a hundred-year-old tree probably. 
Uh, it's got some age marks all over it. It's got a lot of wisteria in it. Take a look at this thing. That's just a wisteria vine. And the vines have vines. And you have them all over them. This is probably an 80 foot tree. I don't see any pecans, which really disappoints me, but maybe next year, right? We don't have pecans every year. I love the pecan tree. It's the only one I've found on the property. Though. The only one. Some neighbor or somebody has a hunting blind kind of set up over there. They're welcome to come get it. We're going to do a little cutting today to make a little more room to get in and get out. Just the small stuff, you know, like, like this right here. You know, that, that's got to move back a little bit. That. Just got to get some room to work, that's all. This is kind of the crown of the property. It goes way back over yonder on the other side, all that dirty stuff. Now that's where the road is. And there's almost no traffic on this road, so it's really quiet. Which is the whole point, kind of, right? And then you see it start to open up down this way. You say, oh, well, you're in the flat. Well, it is a flat. And there's some sign of water that's flowed through here. And then there's vines like these that just crisscross the, the entire ground. It's just made up of wisteria vines and muscadine vines. Muscadine can stay, wisteria cannot. This ridge is where I want to put the cabin because it's really flat. There's already a partial trail through here, it looks like. Muscadine vines. You know, I always wanted a mountain cabin. Well, here's my mountain. <laughs> Down there in a creek. A beautiful cold water clear creek. I'll show you the trees. They're absolutely massive. I, I don't even know the age of these trees. I'm going to say they're at least 75. Some of them can be 75. Some can be 100. You have to come in here. Do what I've always prepared to do. I've been studying for this all my life, you know. Just, it's amazing. Yeah, I've been studying about how to make creek water work. That's where I'm gonna get my water from. We're not gonna be on the grid. No water, no power. A little cabin right here on the edge of the hill and, some, and a creek down below. And I couldn't be more excited about the whole thing. Um, I'll show you some more of it right now. I'm gonna get the saw out. We'll, we'll cut out some limbs and you know, get some stuff pulled back so we can move around in here a little bit. been a good hour and hundreds of cuts later and I almost have a road I can go in and drive around now I get to drag it all up right I'm trying to make a space so I can get my trailer in here so I can drop the tractor so we make this work a little faster because there's thousands of vines in here that I won't get to but I will cut these big ones on the pecan tree today Yahoo! Break time. It'd be hard to believe to say that there's, you know, there's thousands of trees in here probably. I don't know how many. There's a lot of trees in here. They're everywhere as you can see. And every tree has several vines on it. Some are really big, some are small, but every tree probably has a vine on it. It would be hard pressed to find one that doesn't. And they're just everywhere. So they're just like this. And they grow up everything. So I say this is an old forest. 
it's been here a while. All this greenery you see right here, that's all wisteria. All the vines, those are all wisteria. I can only assume that this thing turns purple in the spring. And oh, what a sight to see. But it's really unhealthy for the forest to survive. And since it's now my forest, I'm going to help it do better. See this giant snake-like things going up the trees and big ones over there. That, let me get closer, I'll show it to you. Look at this. Okay, that's a tree that's getting wrapped and it goes way up the tree like that. You see it? And that, that vine's getting so old it's choking itself out. See, look at this. A vine with a vine. That looks like a tree. It's a vine, it's a wisteria vine that's over there and there's another vine that goes around that vine and then how many times can I say vine? Well, it's an oak tree, but it's gonna kill the tree. It's also gonna kill its own vine. It's gonna choke itself. Well, good riddance. Okay, it was one of the requirements for buying a piece of land is that it had to have running water. You know, like a creek or a river or something. And when you get too much water, you can't control it. You get too little water, it won't supply your needs. With Mr. Frog. Look at that. That's just, that's perfect. The banks are not too high. Aha! Somebody lost their frisbee. I mean, there are houses. There's like one way back way one way way back up through there there's a house up there see and this is bedrock right here i could uh work with that to get a little more water i like a free flowing creek so i'm not going to do much to it in that respect but i do need to back up a certain area so i can draw my drinking water from it you know i need to get access to it and that's in the short term because in the long term i want to drop a a well right here like kind of like a borehole okay and we'll just go down a ways six seven eight feet probably get us below that water line over there and see if we have a seep well and that will keep i can close it up on the top and you keep debris out of it i'm above the flood line uh, i want to make sure i'm above the flood line when i do that I make a lot of 12 volt pumps these days those are really nice i should be able to get that water up that hill a ways and if you only get it once, they can say you can go 100 feet with the low power 12 volt. Then just do it again. You know, do another 12 volt pump, taking another 100 feet. That'd be way above where I need it to be. I mean, if I can get 100 feet, I'll be at the top of the hill. So I don't see it as a problem. You, you might not know that in my, my educational background and my jobs have I've been mostly electrical engineering. So this is something that I just really love. And, you know, calculating the, the voltage and amps and wattage and lift and head systems for pumps. I absolutely love it. Show you the creek. Another really ripe place to uh, put in some type of obstruction to lift the water level. I don't want to say the word dam. It might be a dam project, you never know. A little flow of water coming in from over there. That's the other side. And it's been clear cut some years ago. Right now it looks like they're just going to let it grow back up. So I'm all in favor of that. In the years to come, that'll suffice me well. And then a nice deep bodied creek right through here. Another beautiful white oak. And another run over here. As you can tell, I'm just plum tickled about the lay of the land, the creek, the water. Six and a half acres, it's, it's not, you know, it's not a huge amount of land. That's it's enough for me. For an old guy wanting to do an off-grid cabin, it's plenty. And the woods are just gorgeous. And it doesn't appear to have any habitation in here in years. I hear the cars. I hear wind in the trees. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Wild World. Thanks for being with me. This is Mike from Mike's Wild World.
down at Wild World. See you next time. Oh, and there's the gorgeous creek right there. Man, that is clear. I'm liking that. Like and subscribe if you can. And leave a comment. It's a wild world. So get out there. And thanks for watching.